at that time, Jesus went up into a mountain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For days, the rickety, jolting carts, wagons, jerked their way across the Sierra Morena in 16th century Spain. There seemed no end to the zigzags, steep ascents, and abrupt falls of these mountains. The mules went more and more slowly, less and less surely, and the drivers themselves seemed to have no lungs left as they shouted their cries to spur on their beasts. St. Teresa of Jesus and her companion sisters were inside the covered wagon, closed off to the world around them. Yet through a chink in the wooden planks, which closed in her cart, she saw a certain anxiety come across the face of the muleteers, who were hesitating. A moment later, they tackled a steep slope, which might have been okay for goats, but was in no way intended for their wide, heavy carts. She scented danger. Like the captain in a storm giving orders to reef the sails and lash the tiller, the great Carmelite foundress ordered her nuns to suppress the fear they had good reason for feeling and not to lose hold of their faith in God's protection. Saying to them, those men no longer know what they're doing. They no longer know where they're going. Let us betake ourselves to prayer, sisters. Let us ask our Lord and our Father, Saint Joseph, to guide us. Then a voice rose from far away, from very bottom of the ravine, the voice of an old shepherd who was used to making himself heard at an immense distance. Stop! Stop, he said. You will overturn and roll down the cliff if you go that way. Amid the clatter of wooden shoes scraping over the stones of men tugging frantically and brutally at the reins of the jingling of harnesses of the clash of the wheels, the carts made an abrupt halt. While this, the shouts of the muleteers were echoed in the mountains around, Halt! Whoa! The panic of men and beasts lasted a few moments, followed immediately by a great hubbub of questions, affirmations, and exclamations. They were truly lost in the Sierra Morena. Actually, they were all but slipping down into an abyss. The voice coming up from the depths of the chasm had saved them. But how were they to get out of their present situation? How were they to turn around on the narrow path between the rock and the chasm? How were they to find the right road again? With hand over mouth, trumpet-wise, they shouted to the bottom of the precipice, Where can we pass? Help! The manly voice answered, Go back gently, backwards. There's no danger in that. If you go back a hundred turns of the wheel, you will find the right track again. A servant who went to reconnoiter the path that was lost came back declaring that the right track was indeed at the point indicated. It was concealed by a boulder which could be moved without much difficulty. While some of the men in the escort set to work to clear away the boulder, the others tried to find their invisible rescuer. They shouted as loud as they could. They peered into the depths of the chasm. One of them even tried to climb down it, all to no purpose. Where was this shepherd hiding? Who was he anyway? The air was so clear, it was possible to distinguish even the smaller stones as far as the eye could see. And the Sierra was so barren, the light so penetrating to every part of it, that it seemed impossible to hide. 
Teresa's countenance was radiant with love amid her tears and confusion. She said to her sisters, I don't like seeing them go on looking. They will find nobody. But we can't tell them that the voice we heard is our father, St. Joseph's answer to our prayers. They had still one day more in the mountains, but from then onwards, everything went smoothly. Now, surely this incident I recount to you, a real historical incident happening to really saintly people, St. Teresa. This incident is not by accident. First of all, it reminds us that when the ordinary means fail, we must have faith. And the extraordinary will happen. God often allows us to get into tight situations to remind us of this. That he's in charge and he comes to the rescue. Often at the last minute. And for those who have faith, they share the victory with God. Second of all, as members of the church... Are we not like those nuns of old in a covered wagon going along a most dangerous path? Skirting the very abyss of hell, it seems. We are, as it were, along for the ride. Not able to make the decisions on where we're going, seemingly hopeless and helpless. As the muleteer drivers and guides read here those who guide and lead the church seem to be taking us over the cliff. Like those good nuns, we know something is not right. We sense it. We see it on the faces of people. Somewhere a wrong turn has been made. As a result, and not without good reason, we feel fear. Rising in our hearts. We don't want fear. The devil loves it when we're afraid. He loves to fish in troubled waters. And if we're afraid, our waters are troubled. And he can catch some fish. He can ruin our souls. This little story should give us some comfort. For one thing, it says that Knowing everything that is going on around us in the church and the world, that's not going to help us. The saints that saved the day were inside the wagon undercover. Not trying to see everything. Things that would most likely just heighten their fears and paralyze them all the more. Make them angry. You're leading us off the cliff. Who do you think you are? Who put you in charge? Why do I have to follow that guy? St. Teresa saw enough to make her turn to prayer. She looked through the king in the wood and that was enough. What was the result? She and her nuns saved the day. They didn't need to read everything under the sun. Know all the fine details of what's going wrong. Of the evils being committed by this guy and that guy. Finally, the story shows us how others have passed this way before us. And they're saints. They are now saints because they stayed in the wagon. Men and women who belong to the very same church we do, they've been through this too in some way or other. And they're here now watching us. They're with us. It's the same church. As St. Paul says, we have so great a cloud of witnesses over our head. We must remain faithful and confident as they did. St. Teresa's wise counsel is still echoing in our ears. Suppress your fears. Don't give way to fear. Engage your faith. 
Betake yourself to prayers, especially at the Holy Mass, where we can most readily approach the throne of grace. Even at this very Mass, I urge you to turn to the great protector and defender of the Church, St. Joseph, pleading for his help. Tell him today, after the consecration, that his reputation is on the line. St. Joseph, I thought you were the protector of the church. Help us out. Can't you see we're going over a cliff? Plead with him today. He's the church's protector. He loves her. He will help her. Is he going to stand by and let her be led in such a manner? No. St. Joseph, then let's beg him to come back. Come back, St. Joseph, as you did with St. Teresa. We need to hear your voice again to stop and turn around and take the right path through these most rugged of places and times. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.